Whether it's taking out rival gangs in a bloody turf war, injecting innocent citizens with experimental drugs then documenting the effects, or freeing fellow guerrillas from captivity, Streets of Rogue has gameplay diversity in spades. Each of the 20 or so characters you can choose have their own stats, starting items, motivations and overarching quests to fulfil, making any you choose for a run feel genuinely unique. And hey, if you can't find one you like, there's a deep character editor to make your own creations. But what is this game all about? Please like and subscribe and let's dig in and find out in my review of Streets of Rogue on the Nintendo Switch. Top-down roguelikes are well at home on the Switch with Binding of Isaac and Enter the Gungeon being two massively popular games on the system and Streets of Rogue takes elements from all of these games and adds on top a more story-driven mission system and RPG elements. One major difference in Streets of Rogue though is that for the most part when you start each level nobody is out to kill you. The game starts with a loose story about a corrupt, power-hungry mayor who has cheesed off the city dwellers and retreated to his lair way above the filthy streets and industrial areas below. As the latest recruit into the resistance, your job is to work your way through these zones, climbing up the levels of the city and then taking out the mayor. Reaching the next floor of the pixelated cities can only be achieved by completing missions handed down by the resistance leaders and once their tasks are completed, that floor's elevator will be activated. Each of the six zones have three floors to clear, with the last floor throwing in a city event into the mix, which range from a spreading ooze that damages you on touch, to full-scale riots happening where it's easy to be caught up in the violence and mayhem. Each floor layout is randomised from every playthrough, with buildings, item placement, citizen types and missions to clear, being generated from a large available pool of resources and every run really does feel very fresh. The large, sprawling, almost open world style cities require careful studying to ascertain the best routes and get a handle on objective locations. Whilst resistance missions begin to repeat slightly mechanically after multiple playthroughs, the fact that the target, location and rewards are all randomised and this really does help to keep things interesting. So for example, if your mission is to retrieve an item from a citizen, if that citizen is a banker or a gang member, your approach may vary massively. You will almost certainly need a degree of planning before tackling most missions in a level. It's always worth casing the building your target is holed up in, looking for potential ways to get in and what problems could be encountered once you do so. If you've picked up any drugs, one clever method is injecting the substance into the air filtration unit of the building, but this is just one approach and again that open world sandbox style of freedom is really liberating and will also be influenced by your chosen character. If you play the hacker for example, you could remotely access the computer systems, injecting a virus and disabling any security, whilst as the soldier you may choose to place charges on the doors and breach the building that way. You certainly aren't limited to your character's strengths, but it's probably wise to play to them. It should also be noted that cleverly, not every character can perform the same actions. For example, the school jock can't access computers as they're for nerds. Characters also have unique stats that play into their type, with the soldier having higher damage ability for example, and also, to go deeper, each have a range of traits that give them buffs and debuffs in specific circumstances. The characters all have their own unique starting loadout as well, and like pretty much everything in this game, the loadouts can be tweaked and manipulated for a price before each run. The final point I want to make on characters is their individual missions. Each character type has its own main mission to achieve in addition to the resistance missions, which range from smashing items, killing rivals, banking so much cash on a run and so on. I spent a fair time talking about the characters here and it's because they're such an integral part of what makes Streets of Rogue feel fresh and fun. Each genuinely change up how you approach the game and it will be a long time before you level up and exhaust each of the characters and with the aforementioned ability to create your own characters using any of the traits and abilities of existing classes it's going to be a long while before you get bored of the gameplay. Presentation wise Streets of Rogue really excels with the pixelated graphics full of character and it's very easy to tell at a glance who the characters are although holding down the A button will display their names. But it's the music that steals the show for me with a wide variety of brilliant tunes that will have you humming them long after you've closed the game down. Mix in some visceral sound effects and you have an experience that's an audio visual treat. Performance holds up perfectly as you'd expect in a game of this type 
and I experienced no slowdown or crashing of any kind. The icing on the cake is a four player co-op mode with either local or online modes available. Now fortunately I haven't been able to test the online yet due to a lack of players pre-launch but I can imagine this mode being a ton of fun once the game is out to the public. So my verdict, Streets of Rogue is a compelling take on the roguelite genre, with the star of the show, in my opinion, being the fantastic range of characters and general randomness that keeps gameplay fresh even when you're on the 50th run starting in the slums. Snappy performance and tight responsive controls mean gameplay is a joy whether in handheld or docked mode, and the awesome soundtrack will keep your head bobbing throughout. There is just enough progression, especially early on when working on unlocking the entire roster of characters to keep you coming back and collecting chicken nuggets, which is the currency in this game, to unlock permanent perks for future runs is also a smart idea. You also have the ability to tailor the rules of the game too, making it harder or easier by tweaking a range of different parameters from the main hub area. The package is rounded off with an online co-op mode that promises to be a lot of fun. For all the variety, there will inevitably be a point where the repetition of the actual gameplay mechanics hit home, but the same could be said of even the best roguelike games. My only other niggle would be that death can be a little bit frustrating at times, with some situations leading to a mashup of pixels, which make it quite hard to pick out what's going on, which sometimes leads to a cheap death, which after a particularly good or long run can be a little bit disheartening, but once again this is a roguelike, and dying often and sometimes unfairly is something you have to accept. I can see this being one of the sleeper hits of the summer, and I'm going to be awarding Streets of Rogue on the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. Thank you once again for watching the review everybody, hope you enjoyed that and if you did please do subscribe, I always try to make sure I upload a few reviews each week as well as some other Nintendo Switch related content and we also have that ongoing Terraria series if you've not checked that out yet then please do. I will leave it there, thank you once again and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks everyone, bye bye.